Good morning, everyone. So for today, we will be continuing our discussion on event operations. So if step zero is drawing the organizational structure and step one is planning, step two refers to the things that must be done after securing approval to stage the event. So step two is do. This lesson outlines the steps in venue selection and helps familiarize learners with the types of seating arrangements and venue layout. Under this um, lesson is the venue selection process. So what is a venue? So venues are facilities where events are held. Venues may be freestanding or attached to other properties like hotel ballrooms or event spaces located within shopping malls. The event venue is a crucial factor for the success or failure of an event. There are various things to consider when selecting the venue for your event, and here are the steps to do so. Number one, understand the event concept and how it influences the venue. Understand its objectives. The venue must help achieve these. For example, your event will have a cotillion or a social dancing. You can't just choose a venue that has very limited movement. Uh, you have to choose a venue that has a dance floor. Second, you have to know the requirements of the event. The target date, the number and profile of target attendees, technical requirements, where do we put our uh, sound booth and our crew? Uh, how about the food and beverage? Where do we put the buffet table? All right, so number two, decide on the floor plan and the seating arrangement if the program requires guests to be seated. So here are some types of seating arrangements. You may opt to pause the video so that you can have a closer look. The first type of seating arrangement is a like a classroom. No? There's a stage in front and tables and chairs where you can take some notes or do some workshops. Another type of seating arrangement is called the theater. There's a stage in front and there are chairs but no tables. Just they are just placed side by side to each other so that you can face the same direction. The third type of seating arrangement is what we call the U-shape. There's no stage and tables and chairs are arranged to face each other. The fourth type of a seating arrangement is called the banquet or the round tables. At a banquet, there are several tables wherein you can determine the number of chairs you want to place. So minimum, I think, number of chairs are 10. Okay. Um, the last type of seating arrangement is the cocktails, where there are only um, high tables and no chairs, where um, attendees can do socials. Here is a sample floor plan for exhibits. Okay, so as you can see, the registration area is placed near the entrance and the exit. When the attendee goes inside the activity area, he or she will see the stage. And the comfort room is placed behind the stage. So this is one example of a floor plan for exhibits. Let's go back to some things to consider. Um, number three, you have to gather information and in venues used by similar events and other suitable venues in the area where most attendees are coming from. You also have to prepare the Request for Proposal or RFP. An RFP is a letter that says that you would like to know the cost of availing a supplier services such as a venue rental. The letter indicates the general event information and list of requirements. The letter must also indicate the contact details of the organizer and the deadline for the submission of proposals. P. 
please take note that professionally prepared documents elicit good supplier response. Next, you should prepare a site inspection list or what we know as a venue selection criteria to evaluate the proposals that you have received. There are three words that start with C that can be used to encapsulate the general criteria for selecting a venue for an event. This is what we call the cost, convenience, and charm. Let's start first with the cost. The cost is a common factor in decision making, not only for event venues. The venue to be selected must be within the budget of the organizer. Its payment terms must also match the schedule and cash flow of the event. Let's go to number two, which is convenience. Convenience encompasses the availability on the target day, accessibility, proximity to other support services, suitability of space to the type of event, and its safety features. It is an important factor to consider when selecting the event venue. Third criteria is the charm. Charm is the appeal of a venue or is commonly known as the X factor. It is the thing that attendees will keep talking about after the event is over. It can be of cultural value such as UNESCO World Heritage like the San Agustin Church in Intramuros, Manila. It can also include the brand of the venue such as international resort or hotel chains. It can likewise be the charm that appeals aesthetically to attendees. Together with the RFP, you should have prepared a list of criteria to evaluate the proposals you receive. That's what we have talked about earlier. When the proposals are in, you have to do an ocular of the venues that have submitted a proposal. Ocular means site inspection or visit to see if the venue indeed satisfies the criteria. After the ocular, evaluate the proposal fairly and make sure you respond to all to those who submitted a proposal, whether they are accepted or not. You may make a tentative booking or what we call pencil booking upon determining the winning venue. But wait for the final approval on the event before you finalize the booking and make the down payment. So those are just some of the things to consider when evaluating a venue. Now, let's go to examples of event venues. Convention centers are examples of freestanding venues. Some are state-owned like the Philippine International Convention Center or the PICC. Some are privately run like the SMX Convention Center. Convention centers are, by definition, huge buildings with flexible spaces that can cater to events of any size, from conventions of tens of thousands of attendees to smaller meetings, breakout sessions, and other smaller functions. Its smaller and lesser known relative is what we call the conference centers. Conference centers provide attendees with a room for more privacy and focus as it offers conference facilities as well as board, lodging, and leisure activities all in one location. An example of a conference center is the Teachers Camp in Baguio City. Here are just some of the event venues that we have in the Philippines. The ACC can host 3,800 people. It has its reception that includes the plenary and also the teacher's camp that we have um, mentioned earlier. SMX Convention Center has the largest hall, halls one to four. The World Trade Center by its exhibition area only can house 8,500 people. S Omega Trade Hall in EDSA can house 4,000 people. Sofitel Grand Ballroom can house 1,500 people. The Lobby Grand Staircase can house 1,500 people at the Makati Shangri-La Hotel. Ed's Shangri-La Hotel can, can house 1,100 people. 
NCCC in Davao, it's a mall, but it can house 4,000 people. Lastly, Le Pavilion is a tent. Uh, similar venues in Manila include the PICC The Forum, NBC Tent, Rockwell Tent, and Sofitel Sunset Pavilion. Let's have some events venues in Asia. We have Asia World Expo in Hong Kong that can house 13,500 people. Kowloon Bay International Trade and Exhibition Center in Hong Kong can house 1,600 people. 2,380 people can uh, be part of a single level of the Kuala Lumpur Exhibition Center in Malaysia. Singapore Expo can house 19,000 people. Suntech in Singapore can house 10,000. Bangkok International Trade and Exhibition Center in Thailand can house 20,000 people. Impact Exhibition in Thailand can house 20,000 people. As you can see, this is the facade and the inside is this one. Okay, it has 24 meter high ceiling and 12,000 seats. Even if it has 12,000 seats only, it can house 20,000 people, both standing and seating. We also have Bali International Convention Center in Indonesia that can house 2,500 people. Lastly, we have the Kotai Expo at the Venetian Macau. It does not say how many people it can house, but it is 75,000 square meter. So we also have Haiphong International Exhibition in Vietnam that can house 7,000 people. And that's the last one. No? So for venue highlights, in addition to size, architecture, and fast-evolving technological functional features of venues, location must also be suitable for international events. Ideally, venues must be near international airports and must be within walking distance to five-star hotels and major shopping areas. It is a challenge uh, for venue owners to highlight the unique and there is a wide variety of venues today. They range from Sydney Opera House type of architectural wonders to underwater meeting rooms with see-through glass walls and outdoor facilities in the jungle. Creativity just knows no limit and clients are becoming more and more aware of their options. That's all for today. Keep safe and see you all soon.